December 23rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Proverbs chapter 23 from the Old Testament When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you possess a large appetite. Do not crave that ruler's delicacies, for that food is deceptive. Do not wear yourself out to become rich. Be wise enough to restrain yourself. When you gaze upon riches, they are gone, for they surely make wings for themselves and fly off into the sky like an eagle. Do not eat the food of a stingy person. Do not crave his delicacies, for he is like someone calculating the cost in his mind. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little bit you have eaten and will have wasted your pleasant words. Do not speak in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Do not move an ancient boundary stone or take over the fields of the fatherless, for their protector is strong. He will plead their case against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. Do not withhold discipline from a child, even if you strike him with the rod, he will not die. If you strike him with the rod, you will deliver him from death. My child, if your heart is wise, then my heart also will be glad. My soul will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but rather be zealous in fearing the Lord all the time. For surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my child, and be wise and guide your heart on the right way. Do not spend time among drunkards, among those who eat too much meat. Because drunkards and gluttons become impoverished, and drowsiness clothes them with rags. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Acquire truth and do not sell it, wisdom and discipline and understanding. The father of a righteous person will rejoice greatly. Whoever fathers a wise child will have joy in him. May your father and your mother have joy. May she who bore you rejoice. Give me your heart, my son, and let your eyes observe my ways. For a prostitute is like a deep pit, a harlot is like a narrow well. Indeed, she lies in wait like a robber and increases the unfaithful among men. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has dullness of the eyes? Those who linger over wine, those who go looking for mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. Afterward, it bites like a snake and stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your mind will speak perverse things. And you will be like the one who lies down in the midst of the sea and like one who lies down on top of the rigging. You will say, they have struck me but I am not harmed. They beat me, but I did not know it. When will I awake? I will look for another drink. God, I know the first nine verses in this chapter of Proverbs have a lot of different connotations to them. Uh, if you read commentaries, it seems like everybody has a different opinion of what this could be talking about besides kind of the obvious to the... Um, not so obvious, but when I was reading this, uh, as I got down to do not eat the food of a stingy person, do not crave his delicacies, and it goes on to talk about, you'll have wasted your pleasant words, do not speak in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. And that kind of touched my heart and meant a little bit different to me than what a lot of the commentaries talk about. I have a friend who you have a lot of people speaking into her life and she's not listening. And the situation is, is breaking a lot of hearts. We, we know that you're in control. We know that it is your timing, but it's so hard to watch somebody you love keep making the wrong choices. I'm sure I broke a, quite a few hearts when I kept making bad choices over and over and over again in my life until I finally turned my heart and life over to you, God. But this is really hard. And, and as soon as I, I was recording these couple verses right here, she just came full on into my mind, full on into my heart. 
God, I know that she's not a fool. I know that she can speak all the right church words and say all the right things. She knows this, just somehow it hasn't made it from her head to her heart. And I truly want to hope and believe that all of the work that so many people have put into her life is not wasted. And I know because you sent us there that it will never be wasted. But it kind of feels that way right now. God, I just pray for her. I know a lot of us are praying for her. But truly, she's vomiting up your words. She truly hears everything we say because she can regurgitate it. She can speak it back to us. But instead of allowing it to become part of who she is and part of her life, part of that application part that's so important in your word, she just throws it back up. And, and in a really unhealthy way too, by concentrating on all the things she deems as bad in her life instead of the overwhelming amount of blessings you've given her. God, I know we all get into this position where we throw, throw things up, where things that will help us, things that will guide us, things that will encourage us, things that will bring us endurance. Sometimes we think we're just not ready for it or we can't handle it or, or we're in that self-focused arena and we just don't want it. We want it to be all about us instead of you, God. And so when you show us very wise words, you send people into our lives filled with wisdom to help keep us on track. Sometimes we truly are fools and, and we just throw it back in their faces. And I suspect for the most part, especially in this case, we're not intentionally trying to be mean, but you have, you have intentionally sent somebody into her life. And in this case, quite a few people into her life to help her. What an incredible blessing right there it is that, that you have your fingerprints all over this, this scenario. And yet she just keeps hurling it back. And, and maybe part of this too is sometimes we just don't believe that we deserve all the lavish attention you give us. And, and maybe that's part of it. I don't know. You can kind of tell I'm tripping on my words because you and I have had this conversation about her a lot. I know other people have had this conversation with you about her a lot. But we all know somebody like that where we can see this amazing life that you have planned for them and all these blessings are just waiting to come into their life. But they don't even recognize the blessings that are currently in their life. They don't recognize the power of who you're sending into their life to help them and guide them. God, I pray for her not to be a fool. I pray for the wisdom to reach her heart, to apply to her life. I ask according to your will and your timing that she just rely fully on you. That instead of trying to grab back control all the time in every area of her life and talk about I, 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 that it would be all about you, God. That she would come to understand that your plan for her life is so much better than the one she's choosing right now. She's so worn out. I can physically see that without even hearing her say that, although she says it repeatedly. And she's worn out because it's exhausting trying to get our own way all the time. God, I just ask for wisdom for her. Wisdom that will infiltrate her heart, her walk in life, and most importantly, her relationship with you. And for all of us, God, I just ask that we not be fools. That when people try and speak wisdom into our life, even if it's something we don't really want to hear at that time, that our hearts and minds are open to it. It's one of the amazing ways you communicate with us is through other people. God, please forgive me if I ever throw back up words that you've sent into my life. I'm truly sorry for making it all about me. And I do thank you for the blessings of the tremendous amount of wisdom and people you have sent into my life to surround me and help me and guide me and discipline me to be part of that pruning team so that I become more and more who you need me to be in this world. God, I just pray for her heart that it would seek your wisdom. I pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.